Hello and welcome back everyone to another insightful episode of In the Spotlight brought to you by Aditya Birla Capital. I'm your host Darshana Shah. Did you know the Indian home loan market is growing at a CAGR of 14 to 15%? In today's episode, we are going to deep dive into one of the biggest financial and personal decisions many of us will make, buying a home and securing the right loan to make that dream a reality. It's daunting sometimes, but today we will explore the ins and outs of both the home buying process and home financing, what comes first, what's more challenging, and how to navigate these crucial steps. And to help us unpack this journey, we've here joined with us Pankaj Gargil, MD and CEO of Aditya Birla Housing Finance Limited. Together, we will share expert insights and tips to help you find finance and eventually own your perfect home so whether you are a first time home buyer or looking to upgrade sit back relax and let's explore how to make your home ownership journey as smooth as possible pankaj welcome to in the spotlight thanks dashna so pankaj our listeners have been looking forward to this episode because what we've seen the post covid trend a huge jump in the real estate uh, you know as a category as a sector and also consumers are really now looking at buying homes so what has been your experience when we see that home loans as a category today it with retail lending it is all, almost 50% you know of that portfolio so how have you seen the growth and the trends uh, pre covid and post covid so i think um, the growth rate has been quite healthy so if you look at um, how the industry has grown the housing finance sector has grown with a cagr of what 14 to 15% so that's Correct. a a remarkable uh, you know growth if you compare the gdp numbers of the country and three or four things which are very interesting to note is what i wanted to state i think uh, very interestingly the average age of the customer who is taking a housing uh, to taking a house itself has come down from 35 years to 30 years in the last you know 8 to 10 years oh, wow interesting the second thing that we always talk about mehngai badh rahi hai etc but i think if you look at how the average incomes have increased in the last 10 years from 2014 to 2024 the incomes have grown at a rate of 6% there is a resi index which gets published by the regulator which tracks property prices how they have grown that okay. growth is only 4% which okay. essentially means that affordability of you know homes have gone up, gone up significantly what has changed you know post the pandemic of course people have realized that you know study from home work from home you know has become the norm so we saw in the sector that you know ticket sales have gone up people have started to look at larger houses somebody was look, you know staying with a 1000 square feet house today is looking at a 1400 square feet house an additional room correct so that really moved the ticket sales up in the last you know a uh, couple of years another interesting thing uh, you know is about uh, the entire you know indian ecosystem where nuclear families you know have emerged and if you compare the average you know size of the houses that were there in india it was 5.3 number of people in a house that has gone down to 4.3 so more number of people more nuclear families so people are yeah. moving out and you know looking at you know more options you know for staying so i think all these factors are certainly contributing towards you know towards the growth of the housing you know sector as a whole so that's interesting at 14% you know cagr growth this entire category and how do we stack up against global Uh, you know as a global as a platform and how does india stack up there so the best way of looking at the global versus indian i think the standard ratio that you look at is what is the overall mortgage you know as a industry mortgage finance as an industry and what is the percentage denominator is your gdp you know, how is the contribution and penetration contribution yes so there india is about 13% you know of that uh, so overall mortgage finance industry to gdp is 13% if you look at us china significantly better even the lesser known countries you know we are talking about us china but those are also in the 35s to 40s so first and foremost only six households out of the 100 households in india actually have borrowed for a housing loan so they more so the headroom for growth considering the mortgage to gdp penetration of 13% and the 6 on 100 i think the headroom for growth is you know tremendous it's tremendous the second thing which we uh, you know often track is uh, in india the percentage of savings which indians do you know two categories are not gold which Correct. is you know oh, which is very unique to india <laughs> and second is uh, again real estate so if you again look at 100 rupees of saved in india 77 rupees goes towards real estate so it's a very significant you know contributor of household savings in india that is lower in us and china also uh, 
most of us you know in our lifetimes there will be three or four houses that you know somebody will you know tend to get wow. to that, that, <laughs> three or four is interesting <laughs> so, i'm sure we have to tell the listeners yeah. how can they make it happen yeah. so uh, we often don't look at home equity in india so normally when you take a housing loan the entire idea is loan lete hain take for a 15 years loan and you know all of us want to prepay the you know the loan yes. and make sure that the loan is closed in 7 years so average residency period in india is actually 6 to 7 years only while the loan taken is for 50 and 20 years so the concept of home equity is uh, not as pronounced or reverse mortgage is the way you have heard you would have heard in the yes. us where people try to get income from their houses that really has not picked up in india so that's a trend which is you know different from uh, you know us china so uh, you know going back to my first you know the question that you asked i think uh, headroom for growth you know in india is quite significant because of all the parameters that we uh, said even urbanization if you go around the cities yes. well we often talk about tier 2 tier 3 cities growing in india but if you look at ahmedabad hyderabad pune delhi the amount of people who are coming into these cities for work is unbelievable Correct. so the level of urbanization that we see in these cities is also driving you know the demand of homes and also uh, the government pushing towards all smart cities and smart towns coming in so the urbanization so interesting so the category has a lot of uh, you know headroom to grow we are just That's at right. 14% currently but also at the same time this category is highly regulated so how do you see those challenges and how do you navigate that uh, since it is uh, you know one of the very important contributors of gdp in india the real estate sector is a very a large contributor of uh, gdp and also uh, employment within the country yes uh, it needs to be regulated although it is also i will talk about you know how government looks at it and how regulator looks at it because there are two different lenses to it so when we talk about regulation i think uh, we have to be ahead of the curve being aitya villa you know we are representing one of the top brands of the country so we have to be very very conscious of the regulations that they come in and uh, to be fair i think in the housing sector and you recently saw you know in retail lending specifically there was tightening which the regulator did yes. but not that much on the housing side of the story because it's a secure, secure lending that you know Correct. it is it's, happening yeah. and uh, it is while it is quasi consumption but you know when we saw the tightening in retail it was essentially because the money was getting spent for higher consumption where in the case of house it's for asset creation so there are different between adaptation and consumption yeah, yeah. so therefore the regulator looks at it more favorably as compared to you know the retail uh, lending side of the story but uh, recent regulations if i have to say which is all about you know fairness when regulator you know thinks about it i remember the recent guideline which was about parting of uh, or charging of interest to the customer only when the check is actually handed over even though disbursement is ready is a big regulatory change that we got in the month so how was it earlier it was earlier that you could once the check was cut and was ready for you know the customer to get his registration done from that date onwards the interest could be charged now oh, okay. the regulator insists that you know the interest can be charged to customer only when the check is handed over to the customer so we had anticipated this when uh, the house is handed over to the customer uh, so okay. typically in the entire process when the documentation gets complete you have to actually do a check cut or a, we call it check cut in the terminology okay. of uh, you know housing finance so all housing finance companies and banks typically were charging once you cut the check in the system you were charging the interest meter started actually but okay. the registration would actually happen after 10 after days or 15 the, days okay so regulator because you have not parted with the money to the customer regulator you know in terms of transparency in terms of making sure the customer you know was protected in terms of his interests the regulator inter, you know uh, insisted that we would actually go and give the check to the customer or transfer it through an nft and only then the interest would actually start And that is in the favor that's really that is nice. in favor of the customer yeah. so normally you have disbursements and tranches you don't have one shot you know disbursement Correct. because as the construction comes up Correct. the disbursements will actually yes. happen disbursement and tranches refers to the process of releasing a loan amount in installments rather than as a lump sum this phased approach helps both the lender and borrower manage the loan in a structured and efficient manner aligning the disbursement with the construction timeline so uh, we always have sanction loans which are undisbursed you know with you right so yes. uh, there was a particular way in which risks weights were assessed and you know you were supposed to allocate a particular amount of capital for that amount which is undisbursed so recently you know the, again a favorable regulation came where you know for housing you know as a uh, sector those risk weights you know have been reduced appropriately for us so i think uh, at all points of time this is like i said uh, one of the most important sectors you mentioned 50% of retail Lending. it's a 50 lakh crore uh, market okay. is mortgage financing in india india's overall credit market is 200 lakh crore so 50 lakh crore on total credit of india 
is 25 percent and in retail it is 50 percent yes so it's such an important sector that regulator you know always uh, has uh, eyes and ears open and he's continuously monitoring uh, you know the progress uh, within this sector so whilst uh, you know whilst we see regulator doing so you know well for both for the consumer and for the organizations the companies at the same time even government is really boosting the sector and uh, can you tell me more about this pradhan mantri awas yojana where the recent budget of 10 lakh crore was you know allocated and where we are seeing the people below the poverty line or the urban poor or the, you know to give a boost to that sector so pmay 1 this is pmay 2.0 actually so pmay 1 provided a big booster to uh, affordable housing in india and it was a very successful you know scheme more than 1 crore houses in india got constructed because of this scheme and many of the affordable housing finance companies that you see in india which was set up in 2014 many of them yes actually were big beneficiaries and were actually set up because this scheme was in force so it was a big driver oh, wow. for even capital to come into india and many companies were actually set up and uh, to that extent even aithe villa between uh, the year 2019 and 2022 we also forded into affordable housing you know only because of you know pmay yeah, uh, you yeah. know coming in uh, uh, at that point of time to come back to pmay 2.0 I think uh, the government, you know, sincerely wants the penetration of housing to, you know, improve. I spoke about 13% of GDP, okay. so headroom for growth is, you know, clear, you know, clearly there. So the uh, PMAY scheme uh, promises a 2.3 lakh crore, you know, capital investment by the government over the next, you know, five years. Wow. In the form of subsidy to customers, in the form of subsidy to developers also for, you know, creating schemes. Broadly, uh, customers who are in the category of uh, middle income. and also lig and also were ews all three categories you know are beneficiaries of this scheme and broad criteria is that your household income should be less than 9 lakh rupees there is also a categorization on size of property that you know will qualify under this scheme so 110 square meters is the uh, qualifying okay. criteria broadly 1100 square feet you know worth of house 25 lakhs of that's loan that's a amount. good size that's a good that's size a good. 25 lakhs of loan amount but property value cannot be more than 35 lakhs okay. so it's directed largely towards the tier 3 tier 4 you know kind of cities and it promises a customer a subsidy of 1.8 lakhs over 5 years so that's how the interest rate is actually going to come nice. down for the customer nice and normally we have seen that interest rates when they come down that fuels uh, you know uh, buying uh, you know by the customer so i yeah. think uh, they have a very aggressive target uh, and uh, it's got announced uh, the uh, initial guidelines have also come to all the companies we are eagerly awaiting for the final guidelines to come we have made our own preparations and uh, you know looking forward to you know taking it to the last mile and uh, taking the benefit of this scheme. so i will see this this festive season onwards we will see a lot of affordable housing and you know you the will, you will you will see and like you also mentioned earlier unlike the global uh, you know uh, landscape it for indians buying a house is very emotional i still remember you know when i bought my car before a house and my parents were very upset that you know house is the first thing and also over the years we've seen in uh, you know talking to consumers and we see that the first thing and like you said the age has come down they want to buy it for the parents even if it's not for themselves but there was also a huge trend uh, pankaj where these millennials wanted to rent out more and were not keen to buy but post covid like you said the trend has changed people want larger homes you know because they are working from home so we've seen that shift but do we really so how do you see the segments evolving in this category i think people track rental yields so whatever rent that you pay annually they divide by the property price correct right? and as that keeps growing then people calculate that you know it is better to go in for ownership so that's clearly because we don't see better yields yes so uh, if you are paying a higher rent you know you are paying a higher rental versus the property ownership prices are slightly lesser then you know people try to think that it's the right time for you to actually buy the other thing uh, post covid patterns changed so uh, it has happened in cars at one point of time you know all of us were wondering whether ola nobody is going to yeah. be the order <laughs> of the day and we saw uh, post uh, you know the pandemic and of course semiconductor crisis also contributed to the demand that was there for cars at that point of time now it's kind of stabilized but i think the way people thought about safety security people thought about that this can happen this thing dawned upon them and therefore a private space of their own where you know uh, at all points of time they'll be secure i think dominates you know the customer sentiment you know clearly and it's and also asset why. creation as you mentioned so asset creation and also i would also say uh, availability supply supply you know right. of uh, you know supply coming up you know at all opportune places supply you know from all the housing finance companies from banks 
uh, many of them are salaried customers most of them the millennials so tell me now coming home and coming closer to our own aditya birla housing uh, finance limited how do you all segment differently how do we look at things differently and so i think uh, first the decision that we took is that you know uh, as aditya birla housing finance uh, two years back we decided to be a full stack player so when i say full stack we offer housing finance we do loan against property and we do developer finance all the three categories we are present right? okay and within housing finance also there are uh, two important sectors one is the affordable housing which is essentially uh, lending up to 50 lakh rupees and it's further categorized into informal housing and retail affordable housing so anything which is below 15 lakhs is called informal housing okay and 15 to 50 is called retail affordable housing and above 50 lakhs is typically the prime segment so within housing also there are three you know segments three that three unique uh, segments three unique segments yeah. and then there is loan against property which is offered largely to businesses you know for fueling the businesses correct correct and uh, financing to developers you know which is a project financing you know for developers uh, that we undertake i think uh, when we started looking at this as a full stack the first important thing was to understand uh, customer insights for each one of these segments and understand where is the gap that you know we need to fill because uh, without that nothing really operates okay. it all starts with customer insights so i think our focus was to understand these insights and in each one of these segments and just to give you an example when it comes to affordable housing darshan it is what we see while there are so many features which customer looks at when he's looking for a you know housing finance but uh, there are two important things which you know clearly stand out one is the quantum of the loan you know how the quantum you know are right. you going to give so if it's a 100 rupees worth of home If there is home interiors that you are going to do of you know eight rupees above hundred rupees, what is the quantum of loan that you know you will be able to finance? Of okay. course, there are regulations around what is the quantum, but within the regulations, what is the maximum loan amount that you can give? Right. Because, so ninety percent, eighty percent. So the equity which the customer brings from his own, the customer who is an affordable housing finance, you know, wants to restrict the equity as much as possible because that's not available also. Correct. Right? That's not available. So the provider who is going to maximize the loan to value. will be a preferred you know player second is many of them for most of them actually uh, this is the first time that they are taking a home yes so uh, there is there is this uh, you know fear apprehension so uh, relationship as equals you know contributes a lot advisory becomes very very important because sometimes the property documents are also not sorted okay. india is the you know so in india every state every district has a various you know, a different way of looking at properties the rest of wow. rules are also very different oh okay so uh, you know uh, like for us we have categorized our entire country into more than 500 collaterals types of collaterals that we have actually advertised wow. <laughs> so your advisory <laughs> also becomes very important you know for the customers yes. so i think two dominant uh, features advisory and uh, maximization of quantum of finance i think was the big determiner for us and then you know uh, once we had these insights then the carving of you know propositions which are relevant you know for that segment is what we created and of course renting that uh, digitally by creating right full distribution and then of course uh, uh, we have to execute you know things uh, well around these four tenets so i think that's what we've been able to do so we are saying that well. advisory and the quantum of disbursement or the quantum of money that we give for this affordable segment because that's like you said yes it's it's, a, it's quite daunting because you that's want right. there's an emotion but there's fear both playing together and how is it different from the for the prime as a segment so prime will be somebody like you so yeah. <laughs> uh, the prime segment will be somebody like you uh, so uh, there i think uh, two or three things matter for the customer first um, it has to be very convenient for you to you know take a home loan so convenience becomes a very convenience very important. is uh, driving convenience yeah. because the uh, time that is available for you is limited right so it has to be convenient it has to be quick so that's the first you know important uh, parameter second the interest rates have to be minimal so it has to be very very competitive you know on pricing because every single rupee is what this customer is going to you know calculate yes that's going to be very important and third is i think they also want to deal with very very trusted brands and in housing this is across both the segments but here you know they will they will want to talk kahan se liya aapne so they would want to say maine you know xyz bank se liya aditya billa se liya etc so the reliable. choice of the brand also is oh. very important and when we are taking a housing loan you are entrusting the property document with the bank or housing finance company correct so people normally feel that after 15 years is this bank going to be there is this housing finance company going to be there or not there oh interesting yes because 
you are interesting the property document okay. the title deed you know to the company so and aditya birla housing finance pankaj how are we doing differently how have we used digital and tech so i think what we realized ashana is that uh, and this is uh, not only for housing but if you see how in india people are today consuming financial services in the retail segment there are four important things that all customers are looking at and people want and customers want things that are perfect that are convenient that are customized and they want everything now so i call it perfect convenient customized and now so, so it's perfect convenient customized and now pccn wow. yeah pccn <laughs> that's that's the abbreviation so if you look at this customer insight or these four insights then i think it was very important for us to make sure that like i spoke about the you know customer insighting earlier i'll give you a few examples you will you know uh, yeah. be able to appreciate so uh, for the millennial that you spoke of uh, typically a one crore property one to Correct. one and a half crore property is what you know they are looking at and in that uh, you know entire uh, evaluation that they do uh, what they will end up feeling is that today's salary that they are having is you know possibly going to help them to take a loan of maybe only 60 lakhs and they are looking at 70 lakhs or 75 lakhs yeah. because the like the home that they have liked is slightly bigger and better and isn't it always that you have to stretch aapko jo acha lagta hai and thoda sa what you can afford yes there's always so there is for the millennials who are working in uh, the category you know abc you know kind of companies there is a proposition that we create which is called sep up so initially you know 3 years you pay a lower emi and so essentially what you oh nice yes and then the emi you know keeps increasing so typically 30% additional Installment is what you can actually go to during the tenure of the loan. Nice. So step up is a nice scheme for millennials. For uh, uh, you know uh, the colleagues who are you know in the latest you know stages of their career. So post fifty, we have something which is called a step down scheme because ten years is what you or eight years is where you are going to be working, and then there is going to be retirement. So it's so a step down. So wow. it's a reverse. So it's a reverse that we work. So it works really well for the customer because there are many customers who say, okay, I am buying a ten crore house. but you know i don't want a 20 year i want a 20 year loan but i want to have the higher installment you know getting paid well, earlier and later you know getting a uh, lower installment you know being paid so that's about the housing you know uh, uh, propositions it's also about like i said there are so many properties in india there are sometimes uh, not so perfect properties but are mortgageable properties so we created you know propositions that the property may not be as as picture perfect but you know you can do a surface on that property but the customer segment is you know very the income is you know being tabulated very cleanly and then when you touch home loans then ye bhag daur bahut karni padti hai and uh, lot of paperwork there's a kela pan also so we said okay uh, how do you capture this inside and you know uh, make sure that this you know uh, inside is addressed so what we did is that uh, we created a platform which is called finvas and what finvas does is that you know it has a beautiful you know my track section and in today's world uh, a passport application that you do or you buy a mobile phone at all steps you will know where the passport application has moved yeah, at all absolutely. steps you will know <laughs> when you order a mobile phone on the e-commerce site you will know that the phone has reached yeah. you know this destination it has reached this destination so people are used to this yeah, you know swiggy is and all that have taught that so what we felt is that the customer uh, when you are taking a home loan he was feeling akela pan mera said which is loneliness there was uh, not enough transparency so at which stage is he in the journey it was not very clear oh, okay. so in the finverse platform which we decide you know which we created and uh, we did that in a record 9 months time it's a unified lending platform right from prospecting to disbursement happens on one single platform and it's completely interoperable so for the partner who's giving the application to you for our employee for the customer everybody can see where they are in the process wow this is brilliant so my track section it does very well uh, you you have maximum number of clicks on the my track section you know within finverse so that addresses the anxiety uh, you Correct. know or the anxiety or akela pan that you know we we feel you know as a customer i think bhagdod you know to address we have made things quite predictable because customer wants when he is looking at a housing finance company he wants to know kitna milega kab milega yeah. and at what interest rate you know are you going to give it to me so we introduced seven calculators uh, and i think the maximum number of calculators you know we would be having you know on our uh, both on our app as well and also on uh, you know uh, with our team it is available things like affordability calculator people always mentioned emi calculator 
people you know provided ema calculators to you know customers yes yes said how much a home will you be able to uh, you know afford depending upon your income we've created some calculators you know around that at what points of time you know you could you know prepay there are prepay calculators at what points of time you can take a top up so there are several calculators that we build to make this more predictable today i think we will have one of the best ads you know in the industry overall the end to end ad you know from uh, login to sanction is happening in, in one and a half days so no. the entire turnaround time is what you're talking about just in one and a half days i can you will get a uh, wow. you know financial sanction of course uh, in mortgages there is uh, technical legal also which happens so that takes a bit of a time because customer also has to you know uh, fish out this document documents. so there is some time which is taken but end to end if a customer is willing the disbursements can happen anywhere between 8 to 12 days so that's that's the end to end that that you know we have today achieved and that i think has happened because of uh, i would say finverse you know, that we you know kind of moved uh, we transgressed to that so that's really helping nice. us you know in in that domain i really like this. this is refreshing to listen that a here is a brand and an organization who's putting consumer at the center his or her needs at the center because you're saying you are really personalizing and hyper personalizing to the needs and on top of that there is end to end transparency to see that where is my documents where is my loan and by how fast and given if the documents and everything is right then just in one and a half day even it's faster than some of the e-commerce today that i get the money to buy my dream house you know i think this is really brilliant and that brings to my and i was just uh, you know seeing your latest uh, campaign your whole happy home loans where does this enter because i love this whole happiness it's very again refreshing you don't because usually this category is sold on sapno ka ghar dream wow. ghar and all of that here somebody is talking about you know a brand called aditya birla housing finance is talking about your happy home i think uh, coming back from the insights and these two words which is akela pan bagdad i think we said why don't we uh, you know uh, position this differently why don't we make this entire journey a happy journey right so that the customer enjoys this entire you know process so what so interesting what, from pain and the bagdad <laughs> and akela pan you actually turned it around and, and and try to make it happy so uh, how will customers feel happy about this if at all points of time he feels in control then you normally feel happy the if you're not out, you're yeah. not out of control then you are you're happy how will you be in control if there is this section that i spoke of which is my track at every step it has progressed from here to here it has progressed from here to here you can see where you are in the journey that makes him you know in control second uh, uh, happiness also comes from predictability people don't like disappointments none of Correct. us know, you know wants you don't want to be refused you don't want to be refused so uh, customization at scale so uh, if there is let's say an income which you know the customer you know has a declared income but there are sources of income which are actually you know are clearly visible to you you know having the ability of assessing you know uh, that part of the income as well to you know construct the emi also is one thing that you know we we worked upon uh, i think uh, for enabling this i think the use of technology also and the use of ai and analytics also really has helped us you know in uh, creating application score cards which are able to assess you know uh, what is the kind of loan amount that you know we are going to give or which customers will not be comfortable with because customers today want a decision of a yes or no very very quickly even right. if you are not keen then it's better for you better to, to you know say. say that you know we will not be able to serve the customer and that's i think uh, uh, in my uh, assessment like you mentioned well most companies speak about you know din customer hota hai pain hoti hai um, ad we look at the ad where you know paisa nahi milega aisa hum usko dikhate hain i think we want to turn this around and make this uh, you know uh, enjoyable journey safar bhi bahut important hai destination is uh, there important but i think safar is also very important when it comes right. to home loans and i think all this is already reflecting in the way our nps you know score is today uh, at the end of september we have actually achieved a nps score of 72 which is you know quite uh, i would yes. say impressive absolutely and uh, impressive. right from onboarding to servicing to termination of the loan i think across all the three stages is what we track our net promoter scores and i think if we have more promoters obviously you know uh, we create a better brand you know for us uh, more happy customers more happy customers absolutely i think this is uh, very interesting to you know the the dream home where i'm looking forward for the happiness and you've made the entire journey and i really like what uh, pankaj you're bringing in that the journey itself is also in, important and why should that journey be lonely or bhagdor or akela pan kyun and that entire journey is also happy for your happy home and that's why to the listeners and people who are watching the video do remember 
to download the ABCD app. Do remember to go on my track. Do remember to see what is your affordability, you know, EMI or your calculator and not just the EMI because we have so many options available to you. And here is the brand and the MD himself who is saying that he will customize the whole proposition for you. So where else will you get this kind of a magic of happy homes coming together? And any common mistakes that you feel uh, over the years in your experience that, uh, you know, uh, consumers have been doing and they should avoid? Two things, I think. One is uh, leverage. So, uh, and especially you asked about millennials. See, uh, it is very clear in India today with the advent of bureaus today, right? So, in India, 30 crore customers have a bureau footprint. Yes. Right? And we know how many customers have Aadhaar, how many customers have a smartphone. So, there is a way to go in, you know, in terms of the credit behavior of the customers in India. 30 crore is quite less as compared to the total population. No, 1.5 billion, yes. However, uh, what is determined today is that basis your bureau footprint most banks and housing finance companies and any other NBFC is also pricing your room, right? So it is very important, you know, for each one of us to make sure that our credit history is absolutely pristine. So we have to be very, very careful that, careful. you know, leveraging is not high. We have to be very careful that if there is something that you have, you know, forgotten for a credit card at some point of time, some consumer loan which was taken and there's some 100 rupees, 200 rupees, you know, pending, that, you know, definitely impacts, you know, your score. So, uh, most importantly for you know each one of us, I think we have to be very conscious of our bureau score. Uh, how many inquiries do we do for a loan? Also determines you know. Uh, and today, all the companies are pricing their you know uh, offerings basis of score. If you are at 840, 850, uh, 730, 750, your pricing is going to be different. The risk that I will take on you is going to be different okay. because when we lend, there are two things that we look at. Darshana, uh, one is uh, you know intention to pay. And second is capacity to repay. And intention to repay is always coming in from the bureau score. right? So first and foremost, make sure that your bureau score is top of the line. Uh, easy way of doing it is download the ABCD app. There is a credit track you know, that we have created. There's a section within the My Track section within ABCD. Credit scores you can generate. And the beauty of the entire you know, My Track section and credit you know, track within the My Track section is that it also advises you how can you improve your scores. So it's not about just a passive score. It also tells you what tells is it that you can do to improve your score. That's the first suggestion. Second suggestion is I think uh, many of us when we take home loans, see within home loans, let's say you have borrowed one crore rupees, and after three years, obviously the principal will kind of come down. The property prices would have appreciated. So at that point of time, if you're you know seeking a personal loan for you know an education purpose, so if you're taking a personal loan for somebody is you know traveling, somebody is trying to take a personal loan for marriage. There is an opportunity to take a home equity also because you've got you know a portion which is you know free for you to also take because one crore is the original amount it's yes. already come down to 90 Sorry. lakhs 10 lakhs is available for you to borrow and that loan is always going to come at a lower interest rate as compared to personal loan because it is coming with a collateral which is already you know uh, there with the you know company with the bank. and the company has also seen you know your performance. So very few of us also use that. We often take a home loan and then we also take a personal loan. So make sure that the cost is kind of reduced. And third is I think our leverage. So standard rule is fixed obligation to income. So if your income is 1 lakh rupees, uh, your obligation should not be more than 50,000 rupees. So that's a simple you know, rule. 50%? And up, yes, 50%. And as the incomes go up, of course it can be 70% also because uh, you know our our lifestyle you know, does not directly proportionate it doesn't change that much so 10 lakh income 15 lakhs income if you have you can also afford a 7 lakh cmi or a six and a half lakh cmi but lower the incomes the fir has to be even tighter so over leveraging uh, you know uh, you know can also lead to uh, it's a vicious cycle and it can impact your you know borrowing so i think these three things is what you know uh, especially the the gen next uh, 25 to 40 i think uh, that is where the credit scores get established I think that's very in insightful for me too. And now that we uh, have spoken about the, you know, the pitfalls and trends, let's do a little bit about future gazing and where do you see this entire industry moving ahead? What do you see the future of housing finance? So let me be, uh, you know, Frank, uh, I have uh, seen this industry now for 20 years. As an outsider also, I've been part of uh, lending for almost 25 years and directly mortgages, of course, for the last you know few years and also in ICICI Bank. Not much has changed. However, uh, the advent of DPI 
which is digital public infra all of us know it yeah and uh, specifically the physical less paperless uh, you know uh, layer and of course the cashless layer all these three have been adopted by the housing finance sector today no more we do a you know uh, we do a kyc you know basis aadhar uh, in fact aitya bill housing finance is the first company where on disbursement also we do e contracts so e contracts you know most of the other companies are not doing e contracts so it's paperless company. it's completely paperless so uh, that's one of our unique selling proposition in the marketplace people know us for this wow uh, so you know e e signature is what you know we uh, propagate uh, what can happen in the future is so i spoke about physical less or presence less paperless and you know cashless which are the three important dpis and we use all the three of them but the consent led you know dpi which is account aggregation is currently you know what we are using uh, you know uh, uh, you know I, i would say in a very uh, diligent fashion which is also going to make the entire process of you know taking documents from the customer very very paperless so the bank statements gst everything is coming from the account aggregator layer so, no, so that if you also, have your documents all there in an account it's a journey of three otps wow. i call it three otps one otp for aadhar which is kyc second otp for account aggregation third otp for e signature that's how lending is you know today happening that's how Beautiful. it should happen but what will happen in future is that uh, the way i anticipate this is that uh, mortgage in times to come can become something like cash on delivery where you know you buy a good you know on a flipkart or amazon and the physical layer is only when the customer is you know receiving the good and is giving the cash to the customer so here the entire process can happen digitally which is a financial sanction because okay. you are going to give to an account aggregation or bank statement basis which you know uh, one can track your salary credits if you're a salaried customer you'll be able to give a you know financial sanction the customer can upload the property documents you can generate a technical or a legal there are you know players in the market who are also able to you know read government sites and check whether the title is clear or not clear so that is also you know today possible and then uh, the contracting can happen over the phone as well so that could be a virtual you know a virtual you know pd that we say which is a uh, Uh, you know a physical uh, diligence that we do which is happening virtually today so all that can happen uh, darshana virtually and also digitally and at the time that the customer has to deposit the title deed that's the time that you know somebody could go uh, give the sanction and letter deliver. and take a deposit title deed and that's where the transaction can end so i think in times to come cash on delivery will be replicated you know could be replicated in housing finance Uh, that's that's how you know i think of the future and uh, i think uh, in my assessment i think we are on the right trajectory because every single process that i spoke of uh, you know we are at the forefront of leveraging dpi to the fullest so in my assessment um, and government also you know uh, announcing uh, just the way aadhar is there a property id is also going to create created in india and uh, there will be a time that maybe deposition title deeds are also not required wow. and you could you should be able to do a e lien something <laughs> like that if that happens then this becomes as good as a you know unsecured you know loan yes so i think uh, that's wow. where we'll all be and if the convenience uh, perfect and convenience and you know uh, customized and now you know uh, you know now becomes more important and convenience becomes more important and that's going to happen so i think uh, we are focusing on making this you know happen at least at the bella that's great and with this 3 otp journey it's truly faster to get a home loan than to find the right home So now we are going to go to come to the more fun section Exciting. for our, you know <laughs> viewers to uh, see what is important. So we want you to do some thumbs up and thumbs oh, down, cool. and I'm going to ask you some questions. It's like a rapid fire. So uh, the first one: getting a home loan pre-approved before finding the right property can significantly speed up the buying process. Thumbs up. Online home loan EMI calculators can give an accurate estimate of how much loan you can afford. big thumbs up choosing a fixed rate home loan is safer than opting for a floating rate especially in today's market no thumbs down buying a home in a metro city is financially better than investing in a property in a smaller town no so we do feel that investing in smaller town is equally actually the yeah the amount of smart better. smart home you know smart towns coming in the higher property prices are also moved up higher there in those places Yeah, so can you give through more insight on this yeah. so if you i spoke about 4% increase in property prices which the you know property index gets published but if you look at tier 3 tier 4 tier 5 cities there the growth has been almost two and a half times of this so that's so why the, i said the asset creation yeah. and your value of your property yes, will go up right. yeah nice 
Buying under construction property is riskier than purchasing a ready to move in home. Yeah. So thank you Pankaj it was amazing having you on the show and I'm sure our listeners have learned a lot today and they you've broken some of their myths also and how convenient and easy this all housing finance has become now. So for all our listeners and viewers do remember a be happy home ko aap choose karo and do see the link for the video. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. A big thank you to Pankaj for sharing his expert insights on home buying and financing. Navigating this journey can feel overwhelming, but with the right approach and knowledge it becomes much easier. To our listeners, we hope this episode has equipped you with practical tips to make your home ownership dreams a reality now. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and stream the episodes of In the Spotlight on Spotify or your favorite podcast platform. I am Darshan Shah and until next time stay informed and empowered on your financial journey.